Hello everybody, Joe Baggy Donuts here, and welcome back for another episode of Sugihimi Remake. Where last time we left off, I had horribly fucked up my audio, but I managed to save it in post, at least I think. No one's really said anything about it yet, uh, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, because one, uh, they all left the video as soon as it started, and uh, wasn't wasn't there to, to see it all, to, to let me know how it went, or it was... Uh, fairly unnoticeable, which I think it was. Uh, at least when the characters were talking, I managed to get rid of kind of like the echo chamber effect going on there. Uh, it was slightly noticeable for like some of the background sound effects. I was fortunate there wasn't like uh, much music playing during that uh, whole prologue scene there in the hospital. Otherwise, I would have been a lot harder to mask. But I managed to pull through and uh, I've made sure to mute my desktop audio OBS for this uh, for this uh, scene in OBS as uh, the sources are labeled, so that way I don't have that going on anymore. Uh, unfortunately, in the settings, there is no way to get rid of this kind of sleep mode that the game goes into if you don't touch the controller for a couple minutes. What if I just pick it up and kind of shake it around? Okay, as long as I'm holding it and kind of kind of moving the controller around, I won't go into sleep mode. That's good to know. But uh, yeah, another thing I'll be doing is I didn't do it last episode because I had cut the video into so many segments that doing all the edits for it would be a pain in the ass uh, is for the actual picture itself. Uh, in last episode, you could kind of see that the screen was vignetted on all sides by black bars. That's just how how the switch projects onto my computer using my capture software. Uh, not much I can do about that from uh, just a straight output end, but I should be able to just go in and OBS and I'm not OBS and Adobe when I'm editing the video and just trim those edges off and everything will be hunky dory in theory, I hope. But yeah, other than that, uh, feeling kind of bleh today, nothing really in particular. I think I might be coming down with something. It might also just be seasonal allergies, or it might be that it's getting cold at night and I still have my AC and fan going when I'm in bed, and it just entirely dried out my throat. Because woke up in the morning with like one of those kind of kind of not really a painful throat, but you know it's kind of like so dry that it hurts a little, and that's just kind of been nagging me all day. Uh, not not so bad that I'm not able to do this very rarely do I get so sick that I'm not able to at least talk into a microphone. Uh, I will try to save you in the event that uh, that does occur and I'm like all phlegmy and gross because there's nothing worse than you know having your headphones on and having someone hawk right in your fucking ear you know uh, spitting on that thing. Is, is that what the, the, the memes the kids are into? I don't know man. I'm too old. Anyway, let's uh, just get right on into it, because I don't really have much to say at the moment. Uh, but please, again, not, not fishing for engagement here. Let me know how the audio sounds in general. Like, if the character voices need to be bumped, if the music's too loud, if the sound effects are too loud, if I'm too loud, or vice versa, if anything's too quiet. I'll do my best to make sure everything is audible on my end, but... You know, you guys aren't listening to things on my machine, so give me, give me, give me that feedback. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying here. I'm trying. It sounded sounded good on my phone when I was testing it there, but I don't know. I don't know, I don't know man. It, it, it's, it's all my stuff, so I think, yeah, that sounded like it should, but uh, you guys might think otherwise. Anyway, uh, the Sukahami, let's go. The main gate is shut tight. I remember thinking it was big when I was a child, but after living, with norm living in a normal house, I realized just how massive this place is. The mansion sits on a high hill overlooking the city, giving the Tonos a view of all they control. The grounds alone are bigger than my high school, including the forest behind the manor, and it's easily triple the size. Down near the perimeter is a wall of trees and a long fence preventing outsiders from peering inside. 
The entrance at the mansion gate is closed, turning away those who would seek entry. Next to the massive gate for cars to pass through, there's a smaller door for people. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I just thought that was an extension of the fence. I hesitate for a moment before pressing the call button. It doesn't make any noise as I push it. After a few seconds, the lock opens with a welcoming click. Look, man, the, the economy is in shambles. We can't afford that anymore. Automation, it comes for everyone. Not my job, though. I'm safe from the automation. Not, not, not this whole recording thing, my real job. They open the heavy door and pass through the stone gate. The door gives a satisfying clunk behind me, locking itself again. Make my way along a gently sloped path deeper into the grounds. The walkway, surrounded by tall trees, feels almost like a tunnel. Stretches 40 meters east, then turns at a 90 degree angle to the north. Memories flood back with each step I take. I'm surprised you, you know, know your cardinal directions off the cuff like that, but... Good job, I guess. And I suppose the sun's still up, so you can at least tell, you know, east-west. I know this path. I've walked it many times. Just a little further. I reach the corner. My feet guide me towards the north, and the rest of my body closely following behind. And on the left... Oh, it's happening. It's happening outside. I don't know if you can hear it right now because I got uh, the sound suppression on my microphone turned up, which is why it might sound like some of my lines are kind of cut off at the beginning when I start. Uh, that's because the software is like not sure if it's me talking or just a rumble, so it just cuts it out. But uh, yeah, I, I live right next to a fucking doomsday siren. It's not too loud today, fortunately. At least I don't think it sounds that loud, but then again, I'm acclimated to it. Uh, that goes off every now and again. It's it's like to call the volunteer firefighters to the station or something. I don't know. Man. I just look here. Uh, and sometimes it's audible in my videos, so I apologize in advance. It, it usually stops after a minute or two. Antonio Mansion. It's great white walls standing at attention. A sigh escapes my lips in a combination of wonder and resignation. The mansion looks just like it did back then. According to my father, the building has been the same since my grandfather inherited it from his grandfather, though it was repaired once after the war. For the past few centuries, it's been the seat of power passed from one generation to the next. Really? This style of mansion? Like, I would have thought that would have popped up during, like, uh, Meiji or something. This is a holy ground for Makihisa. Oh, for all those related to the Tono. I remember seeing different adults vying for a piece of it, bringing favor with the old man while staying at the mansion for the yearly family meeting. Uh, trying to find the gold, solve his riddle. They were all extremely successful business people with their own fancy homes, but for whatever reason, they were obsessed with the Tono Manor. Getting to live there must have been a point of pride for them. It all sounds ridiculous. Just a big fancy house to me. I've never been comfortable with being privileged. Sate. There's no going back now. A small doorbell is placed next to the comparatively huge double doors. I shake off my nerves and ring the bell. There's no familiar ding dong. The heavy silence continues for a few seconds. The sounds of hurried footsteps come from the other side of the doors. Hi. The doors swing open with surprising ease for their size. Good hinges. Wow, it's Resident Evil in here. I narrow my eyes at the waning afternoon light streaming through the windows. I had meant to prepare myself for the sight, but my breath catches as I look over the gigantic lobby. 
astonishingly beautiful architecture. Feels like I've traveled to a different country in a different time. Look at the mansion, it's so old fashioned. Even the very air itself seems foreign. Even so, the lobby still feels familiar. Ah. Eiko Aku. I find myself frozen as the girl who answered the door stands before me, dressed in a traditional attire. I can fucking release the hounds. The girl, wearing an apron over her kimono, smiles brightly. Oh, yeah. I find myself speechless at this unexpected welcome. I was expecting the stony-faced man who served as my father's assistant and butler to be the one to greet me. Hmm? The girl tilts her head looking uh, uh, likely wondering at the reason for my hesitation. Yeah, leave off those honorifics. Fucking half the translators nowadays do that anyway. Cry and shame, no soul. Yeah, there's, there's good middle ground. You don't need to be one of those... One of those fan subbers who's like, oh, these are my Nakama, yada, yada, yada. You know, you know the kind I'm talking about. Kind of the like old Band of the Hawk fucking uh, Berserk translations. Like, that's that's a little too much. But don't go fucking crazy, you know, itadakimasu, rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. Like, that's that's the other end of the spectrum. There, there's, there's a happy medium that we try to hit. The girl wags her finger like a mother admonishing her child. She seems genuinely upset with me for having worried her. Yet, even so, her smile never fades, nor does the warmth emanating from her. An apron draped over her kimono. Coming to greet me and calling me master. That must mean... The girl answers my question with a smile. She's like, yeah, what are you fucking stupid? Do, do, do we have to take off our shoes? These rugs look nice. The girl motions for me to follow her and begin walking. I can't, oh my god, the siren's starting off outside again. Ugh, it seems louder this time. We move towards the hallway on the east side of the lobby, next to the giant staircase. Yeah, that's where the uh, the room in Resident Evil One is, where you push uh, push the ladder to get to like the uh, the item inside uh, the Voss and the statue, and it's got like a, a save room in the back. I seem to remember that parlor is just inside the hallway. Oh, oh fuck! I forgot to open up the guide again. Shit! I'm so bad at my job. Fortunately, it should be relatively. Yeah, there it is. It's still in my recent searches. Hell yeah. Okay, Kaku, what are we doing? I... Uh... Call out to her and ask her name. I was missing where I was on there. There we go. No, might as well meet the help. I decide to call out to her and ask her name. I can't just be calling her Miss Housekeeper the whole time. Excuse <laughs> I call out to her. The kimono clad girl looks at me, surprised. Yep, no family name, because you guys are weird. The girl, Kohaku, gives a slight bow and a smile. It's a lovely kind of gesture. Somehow evocative of a bud blooming into a flower. Yeah, just don't uh, lean too close to snipping. You might get pricked on a thorn. The girl leads me to the parlor. The parlor looks so much fancier compared to what I remember. It's like seeing it for the first time. Either I'm just too used to how things were at the with the Arima family. 
Harper, they've made this room even more extravagant since I was last here. Regardless, this place feels like someone else's home. I look around the parlor restlessly. Yeah, I'll try not to claw the furniture. Flustered, I lower myself onto the sofa. It's pathetic how overwhelmed I've become from simply returning home. The kimono-clad girl makes her way over to a cart in the corner of the room and pours a cup of tea from it. She places the cup on a tray and carries it over to me. You know, I look back and I see photos of the old family estate. You know, it's not not this fancy, but, you know, it was... It was pretty close. I can't help but feel a sense of embarrassment, being waited on with such a warm smile. I think it's just who I am, rather than something that comes with living with a more modest family. Sure, we'll get lost. Yep, let's walk around, memorize the rooms. Because if it's anything like the original, I can't remember if it was, you know, original Sukihime or Getsutoya. Where you had to make some decisions where it's like, oh, I need to go to someone's room. And then you needed to actually remember, like, what fucking wing of the house it was in. It's like. Oh, yeah. So she smiles mischievously. Gohaku gives a slight bow and leaves the room. Don't be putting your voice dialogue in my narration, Missy. My muttering echoes sadly through the extravagant parlor. Do I stay here sitting nervously? Or do I take a look around the mansion? I Fucking take those Chevroleties out for a drive, son. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, huh? Maybe I'll take a lot uh the ooh, words. Maybe I'll take a look around if I have that much time. I should have time to look around the east wing at the very least. <laughs> Let me just readjust my microphone, because I'm leaning over my desk like a fucking shrimp hunched over my microphone. It's hurting my neck. Ugh. I rise up from the couch. I think I remember the rec room had a billiards table and a dartboard in the west wing. Is this the, the enigmatic Onisan? The voice calls out the moment I step in, uh, I step into the lobby. I turn to the giant staircase to find. Hey, it's him! The the freak that literally nobody knows anything about. Strange man dressed head to toe in black, except for the purple shirt that is most definitely not black, but. The man, who, based on his voice, I assume is in his 30s, uh, descends the stairs calmly, seashells, seashells by the seashore. It's not a trace of color on him. Entire bodies wrapped in black bandages. Looks like he stepped straight out of a mystery novel. Nope. Uh, okay. Kimi 
Did you uh, happen to look like that? Psyche? Is there a branch family with that name? More importantly, this man. かわいい。まあ、よくも帰ってこられたものだ。君のことだよ、敷君。巻下の言いつけを破って屋敷を抜け出した結果、くだらない事故に巻き込まれて脱落した。エイマン、チェダーヴンス。脱落そう。脱落だ。君は御両親から
The girl returns exactly ten minutes later. Well, you know, just had an uh, interesting conversation. She must be able to tell that Goto Psyche's words have affected me. Yeah, thinking about the, the property tax values for, uh, you know, all this land, like, fuck. Tax season is going to be a bitch. She smiles bashfully, brightening the room. Ooh, her office. How fancy. We ascend the large staircase in the lobby to the second floor. Akia's office of the Tono family. I was never allowed to enter Makihisa's office when I was a child. A room occupied by either generation's family head. And that room now belongs to my sister. I like the hardwood. In stark contrast, the bright white of the parlor office is colored a dark red. Luxurious curtains line the windows, a deep crimson carpet, immaculately kept in place on the floor. The refined air to the room is thick with a sense of history. This is where Makihisa Tono once presided as head of the family, and now it's where Akia will carry that burden forward. Gohaku gives me a slight bow before exiting the room. Hey, best girl. No, 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 not, 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 not you, Kiei. Fucking get out of the frame. You're blocking her. The only people left in the room are myself and two girls I don't recognize. Don't hit like the fucking Saul Goodman pose there. The dark haired girl casts a dignified gaze at me as she speaks. I was thrown off, I was focusing at her headband. I'm pretty sure it used to be white. Like what what timeline shift could have caused this change? My head is blank. The gears in my brain have stopped turning. All I managed to do is nod and agree. Pathetic. Though, I suppose that may be understandable. She looks so different from how I remember her. Yeah, her big stupid red bow. The black-haired girl narrows her eyes, as if she were measuring up a stranger. Oh. Yeah. I was just taken by that interesting lamp. Nothing coherent escapes my lips as my mind struggles to catch up. Still trying to figure it out, figure out if she's really my sister or not, even though she's clearly already accepted who I am. <sighs> Can I at least sit on that nice looking uh it's not really a couch. I don't know what to call that kind of chair. It's, it's too small to be a love seat, but I don't know, I guess you can just say it's a chair. She frowns. The words seem to have more bite to them than I, than I expected. Yeah, you've grown. Yeah, Yep, still got that dopey expression. I stammer, crushed under the weight of her quiet ferocity. I feel bad. After all this time, it hadn't even occurred once to me to think about how Akia might have changed. I'd only thought of her as the little girl who used to follow me around. 
The last seven years haven't only been hard on me. I'm an idiot for it to only sink in now that she's right here in front of me. Yep, laid on thick. Clearer words finally filter their way out. Good composure, holding it together. But when, you know, when she gets back to her room, she's gonna flop on her bed and start kicking her feet, going. <laughs> Akia speaks coldly, her eyes closed. Well, I had expected something like this. She must resent me for leaving the family. Silence falls over us as we take a second to study each, uh, study one another. I was unable to say anything worthwhile to my sister I hadn't seen in seven years. Akia stares at me with a guarded expression, inspecting me as if I were some intruder. Though, to her, I very well may be. まあ、いいでしょう。体調が良いのなら話を済ませましょう。え、what?今回の移転について詳しい事情は聞いていますかいや、詳しい事情は何もいいから屋敷に帰ってこいって話だけど。It's not all that surprising that the death of someone presiding over a massive conglomerate would make the business section of most papers. We live in a world where a son, disowned by his father, learns of his own father's death on the internet. Okay, so we are, you know, a little more modern than the original, because... Oh, I don't know if old Shiki knew how to fucking use a dial-up modem. The news reached me after his funeral had already happened. Like I was a complete stranger. Uh, yeah, but you know, couldn't 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 afford any leaks. Yeah, you know, gotta gotta watch the stock prices. He lowers her head quietly. Her hair is beautiful, but that's not important right now. The wording was the problem here. I can't imagine they would be kind to me. I'm good at tuning out funerals. I used to go to them uh, a lot for my work. <clears throat> I've been definitely to over at least a hundred of them. And, you know, you, you see you see all, all shades of the spectrum there. Oh, I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> you know. The, the ones where it's like, oh, like fucking 200 people showed up, you know, like the whole town did. And then uh, there was some where no one showed up. Or maybe the saddest one was the guy's, like, neighbor showed up. Who, like, barely knew him. But, you know, he had heard no one else was going, so he's like, yes, I guess I'll go at least, because that's just too depressing otherwise. And then, you know, there are ones where people are happy that the guy's dead. You know, other ones where they're really sad. But, uh, I don't know, just it being, I don't want to say overexposed to, to death like that. It, it just kind of changes your perspective on it on a kind of personal level like that. And I wouldn't say I'm good at funerals, but I've been around them enough that I know how they operate and I'm able to, like, emotionally process everything in a fairly composed way. Uh... Which, you know, it might come off as a little detached, but, yeah, you know, I, I was about to say different strokes for different folks, but, you know, that, that might get the idea across, but uh, everything, everyone handles things their own way. You know, there's, there's no good or bad ways to do it. Well, okay, that's a lie. There are definitely bad ways to do it, but there's... In constructively processing, processing things, you know, no one's one method is better than another's is... That's kind of what I was going for. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I'm, I'm just bragging that I'm good at funerals. For some reason. I'm lucky to have such an understanding sister. A funeral is an occasion, an occasion that offers closure to those unable to accept the passing of a loved one. 
My relationship with my father ended a long time ago. I have no obligation or desire to attend something like that for Makihisa. I haven't once thought about how I'd say goodbye to him. But なるとどれが俺を呼び戻したんだ。親父の遺言って Or condition. I accept the word defect without a second thought. My father used it often. It doesn't bother me anymore, and if anything, she's right. お父様父は守られなければいけませんお父様がどのような考えで兄さんを有馬の家に預けたかは知りませんが Probably because they were like the closest ones by and it was the cheapest to, you know, send all your stuff to them. You know, I didn't have to rent a, a moving company van and send it, you know, two towns over. It's just down the street. Akia's words are quiet but firm. As if she were shutting down any possible objections I could have before I even raised them. じゃあ、もし遠野の家に帰ることを拒否してたらどうなっていたんだ。God. Okay, one thing you should know about me, uh, I cannot fucking stand, like, pseudo-noble posturing, like, like this. It's just something that is, like, it triggers, like, a revulsion in my brain, like, ugh. Akihisa used to say the same thing. Parents are responsible for raising their children and preparing them for society. Just like any good business, a family can't be sending defective products to market. It only serves to harm the good name and degrade society as a whole. An individual unwilling to remove such a product has no right to be a parent, and a child unable to bear the responsibilities given unto them has no place in the family. Makihisa Tono spoke of this many times to Akia and I, almost like it was more for him than us. <laughs> Yeah, what, a, what a card, old Makihisa. Always getting up to shenanigans. She cuts me off without any consideration for her poor brother, disowned by his narrow minded father. Just another day of cleaning up loose ends for the head of the Tono family.理解していただけて何よりです。言うまでもありませんが、私の発言は遠野家当主のものとして受け取ってください。戸籍上ではあなたは私の兄ですが、この家における上下関係はまた別のものです。兄さん、私はあなたを兄として尊重しますが、同時
それを承諾しろと一方的に宣言したつもりですけど。He's like, okay, that, that's cool. Like, fuck, I haven't been here for years. I g e t that makes sense. わかってるし、文句はないよ。だって、どう考えてもこの扱いになるだろう。今、むしろ、七年間好き放題に生きてきた俺に、妹としてきちんと礼を取ってくれる秋葉に感謝してる。Yeah, at least you're not making me pay rent. けど、秋葉の考えは別にして。You... I'm stunned. Even Makihisa wasn't able to ignore her relatives. But Akia was able to persuade them? Now, if anything, she probably argued them into submission. I see. Akia has grown in more ways than one. And as her brother, it's a little terrifying. Nisa? Look, Chiki doesn't have the constitution for politics. Oh, yeah. ファミリーパーティーとかにもあるし。感動したというか。本当に通しとして認められたんだな。当たり前です。そうでもなければ、兄さんを呼び戻せないでしょう。話を戻します。兄さんには今日からここで暮らしていただきますが、ここにはここの
何の努力もせずお父様の恩情にすがっていただけの方々です yeah, and fucking Koma took the TV apparently. 屋敷から出て行ってもらう予定です。ああ、使用人たちもだいぶ分に暇を出しましたが、私と兄さん付きのものは残しましたので。So, I suppose they kind of filled in,、uh, filled in、uh, the, that kind of plot information after the fact, you know. And it was just kind of a. Thing that stuck that、uh, it's like, oh yeah, we kicked him out and he took the TV. Like,、uh, it was, God, I forget I forget his family name, but it's like, oh yeah, their eldest son, he、uh, took the TV when he left. I think, I think that's when we go back to Oahu to like let us watch the news or something. Yeah, no one likes having their extended family around. That shit sucks. Hmm. Well, she's definitely right about that. It's bad enough having to see him that Christmas. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of money. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of money. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of money. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a lot of money. けれど私、子供の頃からあの人たちが大嫌いでしたから。ごめんですって。ああ、もう、いいから、私なんかの心配は結構です。そんなことより、兄さんはこれからのご自分の生活を案じてください。いろいろ大変なことになるって、目に見えているんだから。Kia says this curtly, forcing the conversation in another direction. Hey, it's, it's a lot to take in all at once, you know, one step at a time. Um, arrangements, you say. Is this、uh, a beautiful woman have a name? Akia, without turning, calls the girl waiting in the back of the room. The girl named Hisui takes a step forward and gives a bow. It's a polite, though emotionless bow, like servitude made manifest. Sure is. The best of the best. Just keep her out of the kitchen. So she's another one of the housekeepers. Wait, what? Jijo, te, somebody, so. Vacariasco, you to, Meshitskai to you, Kotodis. Mm hmm. Do I have to pay her, like, out of my own pocket? Like, do I need to get a job? I don't believe it. But the key and the girl look like nothing、uh, out of the ordinary has been said. Shoto, matigre. Meshitskai toka, ogesa siginaika. Jibun no kotograi, <laughs> Yeah, it's only befitting for a man of your station to have an underling or two. The gaze wanders over to the girl clad in maid attire. Isui shows little emotion on her face. She is,、uh, looks like a doll as she returns my gaze. この人は右も左もわからない子猫と変わらないようですからこの広い屋敷でいきなり迷子にならないようにね。I mean, it seems kind of hard. The, the layout is pretty straightforward, it looks like. アキハ様。It, it seems like, you know, there's the, the central lobby, then you have like a east west wing, and then it looks like in the back that there's like a 90 degree turn, and it kind of has a kind of Not quite boxed in courtyard because it's open in the back, but you know it's enclosed on three sides. 
be uh, pretty hard to get lost in that layout. Isui bows to Akia and walks towards me quietly. She looks towards me, but her gaze is fixed in a way that ensures our eyes don't meet. That's like when you're around a big cat, you know, don't want to challenge them. Now that's gorillas. Y you want to keep your eyes on uh, big cats, otherwise they ambush you and try to, like, tear your spine out. Her steps are measured, but far from slow. I can tell she's done this for a long time. Ah, uh, that's yeah, like, don't go to the basement. Or the weird kind of dilapidated uh, old Japanese-style building in the woods. それ、お守りじゃなくて感謝くってか。Ikea must be busy if she can't spare any more time than this. Isui moves towards the door, paying my obvious confusion no mind. It's going to take a little bit to get used to the new voices. Oh, I was I was too busy thinking about uh, Hisui's old VA, who has uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, yeah, has unfortunately passed away. I was I was checking in my head like was it was it Kohaku's VA? No, it was definitely Hisui's. So you know, no no getting around that. But they just a wholesale recast everyone. We make our way back out of the second floor lobby. Lobby splits the Tono Mansion into two wings, like a giant bird in flight, extending its wings far in both directions. Each wing is roughly the size of a small hospital. I vaguely recall that the building is symmetrical, with the same number of rooms on both sides. Instead of descending the stairs, Isui continues along the walkway overlooking the lobby towards the west wing. I guess that means my room is on the second floor of the west wing. Fucking lock that down in my brain for later. The sun is already set outside. Blue carpets line the hallway, extending in either direction. The uniform white walls bring a castle to mind. The maid walks down the hall lit by warm orange lights. No filter between brain and mouth here. Yeah, think about how much money we could make if we start renting these rooms out, you know, just just we all move out into like a small apartment and uh just turn this whole place into big air eight uh, uh words. Big Airbnbs. Isui gives a slight bow after glancing at me and continues walking again. Ah, oh, the room looks different. His bed's not gigantically big anymore, it's up against a different wall. Things are different, and that means they're bad. Though, you know, at least now it doesn't just look like a fucking hotel room. I don't know what to say. And that's not the first... Uh, hmm? And that's not the first time since returning to the mansion. The floor is made with expensive teak wood. A ceiling that must be at least three meters high. I think I can see a sunroom further down the hall. Hey, I'm recording in the sunroom right now. Great in the winter, because I can just open my curtains and uh, let, let the sun in. It kind of warms the place up a bit. But uh, in the summer, it's hell on earth! The room Hisui shows me to isn't where you'd expect a high schooler to live. I mean, they're probably like all the same, right? It's way too fancy for me. 
I like the like color coordination though. The that that like shade of green goes well with the white, but also kind of the it's not quite dark brown, but it's a uh, it's it's a nice it's a nice like full shade of brown for the wood trimming and everything. Good style. <laughs> お部屋は7年前から手を加えていませんので、不自由はないと思います。え、ちょっといいかな。ここ、7年前は俺の部屋だったとか。そう伺っておりますが、違うのですか。Should she isn't completely devoid of emotion. Yeah, Isui is actually really expressive if you pay attention to her. It's easy to read her. Like, super easy. You can fucking read her like a clock. It doesn't feel like my room at all. Well, I guess that's what happens when you've been, when you've been gone for seven years. But... やっぱりお落ち着かないな。今朝まで4畳半の部屋で暮らしてたからさ、高級ホテルに泊まりに来たみたいだ。お気持ちはわかりますが、どうかお慣れください。四季様は今日から遠野家の5畳なんなのですから
二階に士官の角部屋をうんうん岸間様のご長男が一階東館の一部屋を皆様三年ほどお過ごしになられましたいや、yeah, uh, 岸間 take his TV あとは確か先代である牧久様の主治医様が屋敷に投留されていたと聞いていますうん、huh. 3年もかなあ翡翠そういうのって登竜って言うんじゃなくて居候、yeah. って言うんじゃないか Sui doesn't answer Her position as a housemaid must prevent her from voicing her personal opinions about our guests Regardless, if they've taken all their belongings with them, I can't expect to find anything I can use. Makihisa hated any kind of modern convenience, so I can't imagine he would have allowed them access to the, t、uh, to the internet or a TV. He must have taken after our father. <laughs> oh, buddy, that's what you say.、Uh, if nothing else, I still love my phone. I take it out of my pocket and check the time. Silly to think I was actually worried I might not get service here. It may not be much, but I'm relieved to have at least some way of connecting to the internet. I expected to be stuck without one, considering how out of the world this place is. Meanwhile, Yasui is silent. She's like, Do you have any games on that phone? I don't know if it's just her trying to be professional, but Isui doesn't speak unless it's necessary or she's, at,、uh, or she's asked something. Not being used to having a personal attendant, it's a little unnerving. I'd like to try and make her smile somehow, but it's not going to be easy. I'm sure I'm going to be able to do something. I'm sure I'm going to be able to do something. I'm sure I'm going to be Sui doesn't respond. She's looking in my direction, and her eyes are fixed on the empty space next to me. Rather like a cat.、Oh, she's, she's, got the, she's got the fucking greebles. Sui says nothing. Until she suddenly returns her gaze to me. Huh? I blurt out without meaning to. But she mean. ですからテレビです。以前、姉さんの部屋で見かけた記憶がありますから。She sneaked in a cable box. I didn't in like a shoe box or something so Akia can't see it. Isui says, like よかった。ここでもそれぐらいはあるんだ。って、ちょっと待って。姉さんってもしかして、琥珀さんのこと Is it really that hard to tell? はい。現在。このお屋敷で働かせていただいているものは私と姉さんの二人きりです。Oh God, that's so fucked up. This, this place is so big. Like, all you would do all day is just clean. When I think about it, they do look a lot alike. So it was so different from her cheery sister, I didn't even consider that they might be related. そうか。あの人なら確かにバラエティ番組を見てそうなキャラクターだ。More like true crime. I stop short of asking to use it as I feel too embarrassed to go into her room. Yeah, she's fucking over there in Tomato Town, you know, being a gamer. I don't think Akia would ever let me live it down if I spent my first night back lounging in front of the TV in one of the servants' rooms. I lacked the perfect little student, someone worthy of the Tono name. Sui nods affirmatively and puts her hand on the doorknob. The door opens with a faint squeak. Sui leaves the room after a small bow. The first trial. Oh, so decadent.
You need to get the lighter to use in the fireplace to burn the portrait to get the shield emblem. At least I think that was the puzzle in the, the dining room in Resident Evil 1. I dine with Akia. Both Kohaku and Hisui are completely devoted to serving the two of us. Servants aren't allowed to dine at the same table as their masters. It goes without saying, but having grown up with the Arimas, this setup makes me uncomfortable. I've also completely forgotten about table manners. Humans have evolved the ability to remove useless pieces of information from their minds, which means any memories I have of table etiquette are long gone. Every movement I make elicits a raised eyebrow from Akia. It's nerve-wracking, but it does spice up our mealtime. To be honest, the idea that I'll be doing this every day from now on is disheartening. Dinner ends in silence. I'm so desperate to remember my table manners, I wasn't even able to come up with any small talk. He seems displeased the entire time. Isui and Kohaku have just finished taking away our plates when the reckoning comes. Yeah, that was abysmal. She says plainly. The cold, cruel comment reverberates throughout the dining room. Look, as long as he didn't just like stick his entire fork into a steak and pick it up like that and just take bites out of it, I'm sure it can't be that bad. I knew it. So that's what she was thinking about while raising her eyebrows at me. Verbal or written, do we need to have like a, a whole travel plan for you to sign? 8 p.m. curfew? How old does she think I am? More importantly, you need permission just to leave? Wait, wait, that's... ゆじつの学習スケジュールはこちらで立てておきます。報告によると、兄さんの成績は中の中だそうですね。え、ね、なんてわらんごつ。全く。相変わらず、効率よく手を抜くのだけが得意なようで。Back in school, I hated doing homework. I'm like, this is stupid. I already know this shit. I'm not doing it. So that's 10% of my grade that I just lose right off the bat. So I'd be rocking like a... Uh, kind of like mid, mid to low 80s for my uh, scores in school. Maybe, you know, the occasional scene was a subject that just wasn't very good at, like, math. My sister is painfully overestimating me. And it's scary how much she knows about my grades. Like, sorry, Akia, I couldn't turn in my project. It uh, got eaten by a pack of vicious black dogs on my way to school. Actually, I don't even know that's possible. I'm pretty sure Nero isn't even in this. I remember that was like a whole thing. People were kind of a little upset he got cut. Which, you know, is, is understandable. I am I am too. I'm pretty sure they just replaced him with Vlav, but who knows? It changed so much, I don't, I don't know what's going where anymore. Oh, which means we can't get sharked. Hi. Fucking taken out by, the, uh, by Jaws in the hotel. What does she mean by it? Whip it out. あるでしょ。兄さんのズボンにも若者の象徴のような毛柄らしいあれが。それを隠さずに出しなさいと言っているのです。いや、ますます分からない。これが上流階級のすることか。一般市民は何だと思ってるんだ、お前は。Yeah
兄さんだって持っているんでしょなるほど。うん、yes, I see. Completely understandable. I take out my phone from my back pocket. As soon as I place it on the table, Isui wordlessly takes the phone and gives it to Akia. これは没収します。当家ではこの手の電子機器は禁止です。健全な学生には不要なものですから。Probably for the best. It's really bad for your attention span. 電話ならロビーの備え付けのものを使うように。Even I find myself just flipping on my phone and scrolling through Discord, even though I've already read everything in all the channels, flipping to fucking Twitter, read through everything I've already read, back to Facebook, you know, read it repeat forever and ever and ever. Akia cuts our one sided conversation short and leaves the dining room. The one thing I'm glad for is that I'm. A little, little too old to have fallen into TikTok, you know, when it was like real popular up and coming. So now that I've missed the, missed the, the wagon on that, so to say,、uh, I have no interest in hopping on, and that is sparing my attention span from further decay. I found myself stunned in the silence for the nth time today. I was never super attached to my phone. I mostly used it for texting or to check the news when I had some free time. So, like most people, I consider it a basic necessity. Another reminder of how strict the Tono household really is. I mean, panic phones in this day and age! Just looking at all those lights. And you know they're, like, not the, the good. Economical、uh, fluorescent bulbs that、uh, you save electricity on. Those are, those are some old kind of yellow lights. You know, big old filament bulbs.、And、there's a lot of them in this house. I mean, we at least got solar panels on the roof or something. And, you know, maybe Kohaku's got a secret nuclear reactor in the basement. I return to my room now that dinner is finished. Or, you know, they have some dark captive down there running on a hamster wheel, caged up. You know, at least making himself useful. It's just past 9 30 p.m. I spent about two hours in the dining room in the end. Oh, that's a lot of white sheets. At least, at least make them like gray. Sui greets me as soon as I enter my bedroom. I see my bed waiting for me, neatly made. He was a step ahead of me, it seems. Oh, yeah, you know, just as someone with dark hair and、uh, well, a lot of it, you know, not just on my head, but kind of everywhere. It's kind of like I'm wearing a, a sweater vest at all times, you know, and、uh, warmers on my legs and arms. It's,、uh, it's a real pain with white. Everything just stands out, you know. It's, it's like I got a fucking cat that sneaks into my bed at night and sheds everywhere. At least, at least with the darker sheets, you can at least, at least hide it so I don't feel compelled to, you know, wash them every single day. I do like me a good pair of pajamas, though. I have a nice pair of, like, vertical striped ones that I wear a lot. You now it's set with the top and bottom. All I need is the long, kind of, kind of, you know, uh, uh kind of Scrooge. Sleeping hat, you know, with the really long tail and the little ball on the end, and、uh, complete my getup. A wicker basket is placed at the foot of the bed. I assume if I put my dirty clothes in here and place it in the hallway, then you see we will clean them for me. It's starting to feel more like some upscale hotel. Isui stands there as still as a statue. I have plenty of questions. It dawns on me that I know very little about Hisui or Kohaku. Yeah, like, are you guys taking shifts in the boiler room, like shoveling coal? Or... Like, Uh, do you guys like handle the,、uh, the electron, like, no, not the electronics, the, uh, 
I mean, I suppose you could call just lights electronics. You know, I was thinking more like, are you guys like certified electricians and plumbers? Are you like part of a union? I can't see a key. <laughs> Hiring union workers. Ah, my shoulders feel heavy. He explained everything like it went without saying, but I'm just a normal high school student. I don't have much interest in being waited on hand and foot by a girl my own age. Isui bows deeply. Can you help me with my homework? Is that allowed? My chest tightens with guilt. そもそも正直に白状するとブンフソを過ぎて首根っこを掴まれた気がする。Yes、as well, yeah. Because she's your servant. Of course you call her that. Isui, though otherwise expressionless, lowers her eyebrows and bites her lip. Man. Wanted to make things easier for her. It looks like that may have had the opposite effect. They even got command seals and everything. ですね、ながら。それは同じことです。might as well fire me at that point. Oh, hard to argue against that. It really does fit that of a man or servant. <sighs> Arguing would only serve to trouble her further. I'll refrain from voicing my own opinions for the on the matter for now. <laughs> <laughs> so serious. Her please has a bit of a punch to it. わかった。じゃあそのように。でも、俺に対してあんまり堅苦しいのはなしにしてほしい。お姉さんのご白さんにも。そう伝えてくれると思った。はい。Even Sui lowers her head gracefully. All right, looks like we've got a long way to go until we can talk casually. I mean, you can still have casual talks, just, you know, uh, predicated under the the terms that she calls you Shiki-sama. You know, that's it. Sui leaves the room after bowing. Whoa! The moment I'm alone, a wave of exhaustion crashes over me. A lot happened today. My body is crying out for some much-needed rest. I turn out the lights and lie on the bed. I can tell I'll sleep like a rock. I try to fight against the sleep creeping in. I'm somehow able to keep my eyes open, but it's a losing battle. No matter how hard I fight, I fall deeper. That's just how the human body is built. I 
I stare at the ceiling, still in the space between consciousness and sleep. Back after seven years, seeing family again. Still feels like someone else's house. Yep, it's the start. I say, trying to accept everything. My consciousness slips away as I sink into a deep slumber. I mansion on a high hill, far away from the bustling of the town. Like an island, surrounded by a sea of trees. I come to the, uh, to the conclusion the instant my eyes close. It's like a prison. Yep, quite the uh, gilded cage they got up here. You know, qu quite literally, there's probably gilding in this building. I wake suddenly. Nobody woke me. Or did I hear a sound? It just happened, seemingly for no reason. I wonder how long it's been since I woke up in the middle of the night. I get up, feeling like I've forgotten something. Yeah, I have to use the bathroom before bed. A shiver of unease creeps over me as I exit my room. I start down the hallway in search of a glass of water to, sh uh, to slate my thirst. The long, moonlit hallway lies before me. The night is totally silent. It all feels so familiar, almost like I used to live here or something. I must have done exactly this when I was younger. I find myself wandering to the stairs aimlessly, yet not. Ooh, spoopy. There, a hidden section of the mansion. The stairs connect not only the first and second floors, but also to an attic by way of a secret passage. Seems even the people living here have long forgotten this place. The room, once used for storage, shows no trace of anyone having used it in years. Despite being midway through October, it's unseasonably, unseasonably cold tonight. Eh, you say that. Where I grew up, it wasn't unfamiliar to have snow in October. I have many memories of many years going trick-or-treating in like a fucking over a foot of snow. I rummage through the room, hoping to find a blanket. An old cabinet catches my eye. I open each drawer. I find some odds and ends, but little of note. There's nothing worthwhile in the drawers. Even the giant chest I open has only a few scattered stones inside. A badge, a few trinkets, a pair of binoculars, all things a child might collect. Among them, a single thing stands out, different from everything else. What the fuck is that? Stained bandages, sealed in a clear plastic case. Well, that is, uh, queer, ain't it? Some Legos, paper clips, uh, some of those bar magnets. No, wait, it's probably like a horseshoe magnet now that I think about it, because, you know, north, uh, yeah, north and south right there. You know, poles. A skizzers, some Hot Wheels, a marble. Rolled up neatly, it's so old that they can never be used. There's nothing here. I mean, you can use old bandages, especially, you know, if they're sealed like that. It's fine. I shut the drawer and start back to my room. Yeah, I get watery eyes at night too, bud. Doesn't help that's so dusty in here. Upon exiting the room, I realize my cheeks are wet. I wonder, I have used this place when I was a child?
Yeah, sure, I'll save. Fucking rotate those saves, baby. Even though it, well, doesn't really matter that much for, for this. I appreciate them just labeling it, you know, day one, day two, instead of having the actual date. Because I can never fucking remember what scenes are on what day. No, I don't have a fucking calendar in front of me, dude. You realize one day that you don't dream. All you see is your past set on repeat. A tapestry of introspection and rumination. A refrain of what has happened and what will be, and what will happen through the lens of lucid dream. Oh, that sucks. I get some pretty vivid dreams. You do not dream. I am not here. Chiki Tono has never known what it means to dream. I do not know you. And so, the story is over. Yet you still continue to dream, unwilling to forget. Like the stars twinkling atop the falling snow. Like the sea roaring amongst the crashing of waves. Like the crumbling moon are craving your shadow. Refrain, 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 refrain. Ah, my retinas. At least it was gradual instead of an actual flashbang. I fucking hate it when shit does that. I got, I got a decent sized monitor and the brightness, you know. I got my lights off when I record, so that way I can see the screen better. So when it goes like pure white like that, it's searing. I hear an unfamiliar voice. My consciousness slowly returns. I told her I didn't want her calling me master. It makes me super uncomfortable. Yeah, Shiki is, uh, he has his class consciousness locked down. You know, he, he doesn't like these power dynamics. Cool. I opened my eyes, grabbing my glasses from the bedside and put them on. The lines fade instantly. I sit up. Trying to shake away the remnants of sleep. Oh, go talk about sleeping in bed. Late. I say late, it's like 8 p.m. But, uh, it's just because I was being lazy and started way too long to record. I mean, started, waited too long. Too long. Where am I? Ohayou The maid bows. Ah, uh, so ka. Isui stands by the door to my bedroom, her posture perfect like a statue. Mind is still a bit foggy, likely from sleeping in a new place. Yeah, I haven't got used to the bed yet, or the pillows. Isui calls out to me. I shake my head to wake myself up. What kind of beds and pillows do you guys prefer? I prefer like a good firm mattress with like kind of a soft top. And uh, I prefer my pillows really thin and flat. If I go to like hotels and they have like those super fucking thick square pillows where it's like almost a sphere, I can't use them. They're too much. It like kinks my neck. Like usually when I use a pillow, it's just as padding for like on top of like my uh, my like forearm and bicep. I just kind of put that on my pillow on top of that, and then my head on top of the pillow and my arm, and that's how I sleep. I think it's because I used to do a lot of camping as a kid, and you know, you know the hard, firm ground, and you know, not really much room for big old plush pillows out in the woods. See what he answers flatly. It's too bad, I think. So we would be unstoppable if she just had half the brightness of her sister. Uh, not that I have any right to judge someone's character. 
Hey, you're rather depressing yourself, bud. Sui speaks up, perhaps aware of my gaze. Yeah, I get out of bed and take a deep breath. Clock says it's a little before 7 a.m. Oh, if only, if only I could sleep in that long. It's a bit earlier than when I usually wake up. Oh. Japanese schools have it so good. I had to be in the classroom by like 7.30, which because I live so far away meant I had to be up. I was usually up at either like 5.30 or 5.45, you know, Take a shower, get dressed, eat breakfast, kind of, kind of just sit around for a little bit, then do like my half-hour commute to work. I'm not work, Jesus, uh, to school. I had to pick up my friend because we carpooled, mainly because I had my license for him. And his mom gave me gas money if I did it. That was a good deal. Okay, so we do eat breakfast in the dining room. I thought we would have, like, you know, a separate, you know, sub-dining room for just breakfast. No, but we're not that posh. <laughs> you see we bows and leaves the room. Venture down to the first floor lobby. Already changed my underclothes and put on my uniform. I fucking hope you change your underwear, dude. The dining room is just inside the west wing, mirroring the location of the parlor and the east wing. It's a large room to the left of the hall, on the opposite side of the stairs. Haku had been waiting for me, it seems. So we must have told her last night that being called Master makes me uncomfortable. Seems Kohaku is a little more flexible when it comes to that sort of thing. They really are about as different as two people can be. Kohaku quickly sets the table. Prepared for me is a full traditional Japanese meal, a one soup, three sides, set with rice. Mmm, any fish? Except... しまった。昨日うちに行っておくべきだった。お、もしかして苦手なものが入っていました。I love me a good old root vegetable. Like I I fuck up some beets, not gonna lie. I actually am a freak who gets beet juice at the store. And I will just eat, like, an entire fucking can of sugar beets. That's a little too much. Uh, there's a little too much. Always been a light eater, especially when it comes to breakfast. Same. The more I eat, the worse my heartburn gets until my appetite is totally gone. I don't get heartburn. I, like, I don't think I've ever fucking gotten a heartburn. Like, for real. Uh, but I usually only eat one real meal a day with, like, a snack in the morning with my coffee. I feel pretty good today, so I could probably eat a full bowl, of, full bowl of rice. But on bad days, I can only manage a bite or two. So this is a good thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat it. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat it. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat it. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat it. I'm not sure if I'm going to eat it. Mmm, yep, good. You can have the leftovers if you want. They quickly blurred out my honest impression. I don't want to seem ungrateful after Kohaku cooked a wonderful meal for me. Now this is her fault. It was really her back then. She drove the car that ran you over. She's behind it all.
ごちそうさまでした。大変おいしかったです。Yeah, now you're just making me hungry. I got some like leftover pork fried rice in the fridge that I'll have after this. I bring my hands together and express my thanks. Kohaku's breakfast was a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. It was delicately seasoned, with none of the flavors overpowering one another. Each bite served only wet my appetite more. I'm sure most high school guys would have helped themselves to seconds or thirds. <laughs> I have the bad habit of when I'm cooking for myself, I just do not give a shit. I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll fucking microwave some chicken breast for 20 minutes and have that. It'll be fine. You know, obviously, I actually put in some effort when I'm, you know, I know other people are going to be eating my stuff, but like, oh, what if, what if I over seasoned it? You know, oh, what if, what if the salt grains I used were too big and they bite into it and all they, all they get is a nice, you know, rock salt just, and that's all they can taste and it ruins the entire, the entire meal. Kohaku smiles sweetly. I think she's got things wrong. The joy's all mine. I need to see a smile like that. Kohaku giggles as she continues tidying up. It's already 7.20 a.m. So I should start getting ready to go to school. I thank Kohaku one last time and leave the room. Furniture in this fucking house is so white. I'm like getting, I'm losing the hair just thinking about it. Uh, you know, oh, little stains, you know. Oh, it's just been in the sun, you know, it's, it's, it's bleached, like, ah! Isu and Nikia are already in the parlor when I arrive. He is wearing the uniform for Asagami's Girls Academy, a prestigious school for young ladies. Yo, yo, ohayo, Akiha. Ohayo gozaimasu, Nisa. Known for their long history of, uh, housing Emoto heroines. Yeah, you know, new mattress, gotta adjust. Also, did you take a shower, dude? I don't remember you uh, saying last night, like, oh yeah, you know, after dinner, I, uh, you know, took a, took a quick rinse off and then went to bed. Fucking stanky-ass motherfucker. Snippy is the first word that comes to mind. It's probably not a good idea to tell her that I actually woke up earlier than usual this morning. Uh, is it black or green? No, it's the morning. I, I can see... It's actually hard to say. I can see uh, Akia liking both. Though I see her as a black coffee kind of girl. With a fucking cigarette. Oh, no, that shit rots your teeth. Oh, uh. Black all day, baby. I'm the kind of freak that actually kind of likes bitter flavors. Thus begins an inexplicable morning. Alright, it's black tea. Sui places a cup on the table and returns to her position by the wall. I take a sip of the ruby colored tea and. Hold on. What is this? Kinda got those uh, all spices in there. Flabbergasted, I ramble on nonsensic, uh, nonsensically. Uh, nonsensically? I really want to say nonsensibly, but 
guess nonsensically is already is uh, also right. I didn't care much for the lavishness of the mansion I saw yesterday. But this tea is something else entirely. Well, it is October. Good old pumpkin spice. ソニオそのものは1850年頃。日本に上陸したのはつい最近。15年ほど前だから well, if we're talking black teas here, like a, like an Irish breakfast blend or uh, orange paco. Nikki laughs, seemingly having found my reaction to music. お値段も手頃だそうですし、庶民派の兄さんに合わせてみた買いがありました。上質の葉には黄金に等しい価値があると勉強になりましたか？ it is nice to splurge every now and again and get a get a good tea or coffee blend. Uh, yeah, I'm a fucking well, yeah, uh, uh, Neanderthal here who just literally buys the bottom shelf stuff. Um, my go-to is Reveille brand. I don't know if they sell it in civilian supermarkets, but they do in the commissaries on base. Uh, big old yellow tin. It's like two bucks for like fucking five pounds of the shit. Uh, tastes like fucking mud water, but uh, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine that I, I'm like, ooh, this is like so bad, I kind of like it. She looks down on me as if I'm a Neanderthal to her sophisticated queen. Even the way she returns her cup to the saucer is refined. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but she's right. This is what real tea tastes like. Have you even been drinking up until now? I understand why all those trading companies sprouted up uh, just to get their hands on this stuff. Ten minutes have passed since I came to the parlor. Mickey and I spend most of our time enjoying our tea. Few words were spoken. Every time our eyes meet, we both turned our gazes back to our cups. Honestly, I've never felt more awkward. But even so, it wasn't a bad way to spend time. Having abandoned her for so long, seeing Akia able to pass time peacefully like this fills me with an emotion I can't quite explain. Leaf? Is that what this is? Regardless, it makes me happy to see Akia here in front of me. Just as I'm enjoying, uh, enjoying things, a strange noise comes from the hall. Hello, other new character. What's up, Doc? The sound of someone's horrendously off tempo humming creeps through the wall. Good morning! You are certainly a card. The thing that slams open the door is decked out in an outfit that's just outrageous as their entrance. A top that doesn't leave much to the imagination. A tight leather skirt. The long hair is crudely bound together. She doesn't seem to be wearing makeup. Her lips are strangely captivating. Her reddish blonde hair, combined with the fact that she's taller than me, tells me she's not Japanese. I glance at her unmistakable curves. She does have a great figure. She gives off the impression of a woman, and a person that would be more suited to lounging on the beach somewhere instead of standing here in this old mansion. At least, she would if she weren't if it weren't for her white coat. Which strangely suits her. Yeah, almost like it was designed for her or something. 
Okay, it is pronounced Arak. Yeah, you know, didn't want to get, get in the way of your brother's sisterly bonding, you know? Fucking just put battery acid in the cup, why don't you? The woman in the white coat barges into the parlor. Her eyes naturally meet with mine. Hmm, something is out of place here. She stares at me. After scanning me for some time, I catch the woman smirking at me when, oh, I'd just kill myself if that happened. <laughs> yep, already tying the noose. doubled over, howling with laughter. Uh, nice to meet you, too. All I can do is frown. Who is this person? Akia called her doctor, but... Akia coughs and chides the woman, seeing my predicament. Uh, her, your boss. Ah, well, uh, let's maybe hear some good things? From Akihisa? And this woman knew my father? So, so, I was the one well, that can never be a good thing. Yeah, but he had a lot of money. Good to know. I look over to Akia to confirm if uh, what I had just been told is true. Don't have the courage to talk to this woman directly. Damn, uh. Pops go back to school late, or. Or does she just look good for her age? What, do you have like tenure at a university? Rock laughs, not looking even the least bit sad. Except, in mid-laughter, I noticed that her eyes have never left me since she entered the room. Like we're connected by a thread. Save me, Hisui. Hisui intervenes, my goddess. Either unaware or unfazed by our conversation, she serves the calm Arak's energy. She serves two. I'm like, there's nothing calm about Arak here. What are you talking about? She's not happy to be interrupted. Yeah, you're ruining the bit. The rock puts her hand on her hips as she downs her sugar-filled tea in one breath. Oh, nice sugar! Oh, 
とか言っちゃってたまんないラブ入ってきたじゃあ定期診断に行ってきます大浴場の空調がおかしいんでしょわかってるわかってるささっとチェックしてついでに4クラスターとか足してみましょう You're throwing me off here fucking doc Are you having a stroke or am I having a stroke? Rock saunters over to the door to the hallway, laughing all the while. She turns to face me, her hand on the doorknob. You got something in your eye? You keep, you keep like closing it like that. The intruder leaves the same way she arrived, humming to herself. So, what was that? An awkward silence pervades the parlor. Nah, Akiha. Arak-sensei ni tsuite wa, watashi mo yoku wa shirimasen. You couldn't have fired her too? Otousama no yuigon no kankei de, yashiki honkan e no deiri to teire o ichinin sare teiru kata desu. Otousama wa, kenchiku ka toshite chouho o nasatte ita to ka. Well, she's certainly eccentric. Akia explains the situation curtly. She answered before I could even ask who the woman was, as if to say she doesn't want me asking any more questions. Yeah, you know, a fucking wild animal got in. You know, maybe I lied. Maybe I do get heartburn because I'm fucking feeling it having, after having to deal with a rock. Eric? I'm not calling her Eric. Uh. Daichi. Haku seems amused by Kia's defense. It's only the second day that I feel like I'm starting to understand the relationship. So, let's go to the school. Mm -hmm. Yep, There she goes again. My sarcasm is quickly hurled back in my face by her cold, pointed response. News によると, Sakuya, Soya Eki Kitaguchi de, Furosha no Itaiga Hakin Sareta Sodis. Ayo Shicho near Toshitomo, Shuket near Suijak Shitomo Hodo Saretimas. Eh, probably happens all the time. She so ado, I was to worry about. Konotokoro Hankagai no Chiyama Yokunai Yodis. So Natoki ni de Arite. くだらない事件に巻き込まれては遠のけの恥ですから学校が終わり次第日が落ちる前に屋敷に戻ることを心がけてください。Akia leaves the parlor after reminding me of my curfew. But she wants me home before the sun sets. That means I'll have to be back by six. I can make my curfew eight o'clock then. The clock in the parlor puts the time at 7.30. I can make it to school as long as I have 30 minutes to spare. But will Akia arrive on time? I think I remember Asagami Girls Academy being pretty far away. Huh? Shiki-san? Shiki-san? Can you hear me? Yes, you are. I'm sorry for the fact that you're not in the middle of the night. Yep, yep, loud and clear. God. What is she doing? 
Hidden behind the sofa, she gestures for me to come over to her. Yeah, don't you gotta be like driving the car? Kohaku pulls out a cell phone from the sleeve of her kimono. That's my phone that Akia confiscated yesterday. Uh -huh. now, really, it makes more sense for you to have a phone so that way we can reach you where you can reach us in uh, case of an emergency. At least someone in the tone of manner is on my side. I take the phone and quickly slip it into the inner pocket of my uniform. I don't want to be stuck out there in the rain or something. A keycard for the gate. The Tono sure don't slouch when it comes to security. Yeah, scram, get going. Goku hurries off after Akia. しきさまのお時間はよろしいのですかああ、ここから学校まで歩いても Oh, uh, Having a personal maid really is embarrassing. I rise from the sofa in response to Hisui's urging. Disregarding the intruder earlier, my first morning in the mansion after seven years passed without much issue. Issue? It's is, issue? Issue? Words are hard. Getting late. I'm sundowning. You know, I'm losing it. My mental faculties deteriorating rapidly. Tui sees me out as I leave the mansion. The Tono Estate rests atop a high hill on the outskirts of Soya, quite a distance from the station. From the vast stretch of forest in the area, it's easy to think that the manor was simply built to be an entrance to it. it. Only takes a little more than 30 minutes to pass the station and get to school from here. I should be able to make it in time for homeroom if I hurry a bit. It'd be quicker if you had a bike. I make my way down the long decline. It's my first time taking this route to school since I always took the train when I was with the Arimas. Almost feels like I'm going uh, to an entirely different school. I don't see uh, many from Soya High in this area. 7.30 a.m. I seem to be the only one wearing a school uniform. Unlike the south exit yesterday, North exit is crowded with commuters. Men in suits rush by on their way to work, a kind of sight that's entirely common. They appear unbothered by the recent happenings in the city. Or, at least it's not enough to warrant changing their day-to-day -day schedule. Regardless, there's no obvious change in, uh, to the town. I guess few would avoid going out at night based on a bad feeling like our Hiko. head to the residential district, away from the station. Unlike before, the road here is packed with uniformed students. 
My phone tells me I have five minutes until the school gates close. I quicken my pace, dashing down the asphalt path so I won't be late. It took me around 30 minutes, just like I told Hisui. I did have to run once or twice, so I should leave a bit before 7.30 if I want to have plenty of time. Arahiko isn't here today. I guess him coming yesterday was really a fluke. I walk over to my desk, greeting my classmates on the way. I check my phone for the first few minutes I have until the homeroom starts. I scan the morning news as well as both school forms, the official one created on the behest of the younger teachers, and an anonymous board made by students. There's nothing particularly interesting this morning. I look up and find the vast majority of other students are spending their time in a similar fashion. Damn kids just play on their phone all day these days. Apparently. Most teachers over 30 say we don't have any real friends. Common misconception by the previous generations. All that's changed is how we define our friendships. We value our friends behind the monitor just as much as those we talk to in person. Our class gets along just fine. If anything, it used to be difficult to make friends outside of your own class. But that's not the case anymore. It's easier than ever to find people you click with room doesn't need to be like family anymore, as long as people get along okay. The rapid growth of the internet has bridged any gap in knowledge caused by age. Why not share the same wealth of experience? I'd say we're pretty even when it comes to day-to-day -to -day things. They say we have no passion, no dreams, no hope. But I think that's our fault, but I don't think that's our fault. The world is smaller than it used to be. Even elementary schoolers know just how stalled our society has become. Which is why it's become difficult to have dreams in this day and age. That's why it means to share information. That's what it means. The larger our collective knowledge grows, the smaller the lives of the people who possess it seem to become. People who used to look beyond the horizon to learn. We don't need any more need to go anywhere. People may be free, but they've lost all reason to venture outside their narrow world. Whether that be the classroom, school, or city, people feel trapped. At least that's what people say, and that's just their personal opinion. I don't feel that sense of being trapped. I don't have any problems with our society or feel we're, like we're stuck. The only thing I'm worried about is enjoying every day I have as much as I can. To start with, it's probably wrong for someone dreaming of the simple life to drone on about the complexities of society. I bet I'm full of misconceptions. Yeah, also, you're like 17. Almost all your conceptions are misconceptions. The bell for homeroom rings while I'm lost in thought. The students who had been chatting away returned to their seats. I put away my phone and ready my mind for class. Thus begins my second day of school since returning home. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, with that beginning of the second day of class there, that is where we're going to end it here for today. I had actually meant to stop, you know, when he, when he got to school, but I just kept reading and I forgot I had planned to stop. So uh, that's, that's where I'm cutting it. So... Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell so you guys on next time for the next episode of uh, Tsukihime Remake. I would actually remember what game I was playing there for a second. Uh, I'll catch you guys all later. Bye-bye now.